When we think of medieval fortifications, we often picture massive European stone walls reaching towards the sky. These imposing structures, built to protect entire cities, represented the pinnacle of defensive architecture in the West. Yet halfway across the world, Japan took a remarkably different approach to castle defense. Today we'll explore a fascinating historical puzzle. Why did Japan, despite its sophisticated architectural capabilities, choose not to build fortress cities? The answer lies in a unique combination of geography, climate, and military strategy that led to one of the most effective defensive systems ever developed. In this video, we'll compare European and Japanese castle designs, examine the four crucial roles of Japanese castles, and uncover how Japan's island geography though shaped its defensive architecture. We'll also explore some remarkable examples that demonstrate the ingenuity of Japanese castle designers. Since ancient times, humans have sought to protect their territories through increasingly sophisticated defensive structures. This evolution reached its peak in medieval times, with two distinct approaches emerging in Europe and Japan. In Europe, this culminated in the fortress city, entire urban centers surrounded by towering stone walls. These massive structures were a direct response to the constant threat of invasion across land borders, where armies could march freely between territories. Japan, however, developed something quite different. Rather than enclosing entire cities in stone, Japanese architects created a complex system of natural and artificial defenses that worked in harmony with the landscape. This approach would prove just as effective, if not more so, than their European counterparts. The most obvious difference between European and Japanese castles lies in their construction. European castles were built primarily of stone, with walls often several meters thick. Japanese castles, while incorporating stone in their foundations, featured distinctive wooden structures rising above stone bases. This wasn't simply a matter of available materials. The design choices reflected fundamentally different approaches to defense. European castles were built to withstand prolonged sieges, while Japanese castles were designed for a combination of defense, administration, and symbolic power. Perhaps the most striking difference was how these structures integrated with their surrounding communities. European fortress cities encompassed entire populations within their walls while Japanese castle towns spread out below their castles in carefully planned districts, each serving a specific defensive and social function. Japanese castles served four distinct, yet interconnected roles. First, they were military strongholds designed to repel invaders and protect strategic locations. The white walls weren't just for show. They were carefully engineered defensive structures complemented by an intricate system of moats and natural barriers. Second, these castles served as powerful symbols of authority. The imposing white towers, visible from great distances, reminded everyone of the Lord's presence and power. Take Osaka Castle, for instance. Its massive stone walls and towering keep made it one of the most impressive structures in medieval Japan. Third, Japanese castles functioned as administrative centers. The castle complex contained government offices, meeting halls, and storage facilities. This was where important political decisions were made, taxes were collected, and domain affairs were managed. It's fascinating to note that many modern Japanese government buildings still stand on former castle grounds. The fourth role was as a residential complex though not in the way many might expect. While European castles often housed entire noble families and their staff, Japanese castles were more specialized. The main keep was rarely used as living quarters. Instead, separate palace buildings within the castle grounds served this purpose. But why did Japan develop this unique approach? The answer lies primarily in Japan's geography. As an island nation, 
Japan faced different challenges than continental Europe. While European nations needed to defend against armies that could approach from any direction by land, Japan's primary defense was the sea itself. This geographical advantage allowed Japanese castle designers to focus on internal defense rather than building massive walls to encircle entire cities. They could concentrate on defending against smaller-scale conflicts and internal rivalries rather than large-scale foreign invasions. Another crucial factor was Japan's seismic activity. Building high, heavy stone walls in an earthquake-prone country would have been impractical and dangerous. Instead, Japanese architects developed a system that combined lower stone foundations with wooden superstructures, a design that could better withstand seismic events. Let's look at some specific examples. Himeji Castle, often called the White Heron Castle, perfectly demonstrates these principles. Its defensive system included multiple baileys, curved approaches to slow down attackers, and clever use of the natural terrain. Yet it achieved this without the massive walls characteristic of European fortresses. Weta Castle in Nagano Prefecture shows how Japanese designers used natural features for defense. Built along a river, the castle's defenses were so effective that it withstood two sieges by the powerful Tokugawa army, despite being defended by a much smaller force. Perhaps the most impressive example is Osaka Castle. Its defensive system included an extensive network of moats and walls that stretched for kilometers. Yet even here, the defense relied more on clever design and natural features than on sheer wall height. The Japanese approach to castle defense, then, wasn't a compromise forced by technological limitations. Rather, it was a sophisticated response to Japan's unique geographical and cultural conditions. By working with the landscape, rather than trying to dominate it, Japanese castle designers created defensive systems that were both practical and aesthetically pleasing. What's particularly fascinating is how these design choices influenced the development of Japanese cities. The castle town layouts developed during this period can still be seen in many modern Japanese city centers, demonstrating the lasting impact of these architectural decisions. As we conclude, it's clear that Japan's decision not to build European-style fortress cities wasn't a limitation, but an innovation. By adapting their defensive architecture to local conditions, Japanese builders created something uniquely effective and distinctly Japanese.